This poem is called A Walk Down Wedgwood Lane. The melting frost on the midnight roofs house the cows with their mud-shorn hooves, whilst, skeletal-like, the winter weeping willows sleep and the hickory smoke-scented quietness sweeps the peace of Christmas past down the iron-barred drain. Joggers like slugs in the early sunlit morning slither slowly up Mary's hill while the black crows still are cawing over the brightness of the slime of their foot-fluorescent greens whose reflection marks the sun sitting high in the corner of my eye beneath the roof of my own black felt hat and the collar-top lip of my old man's overcoat, as she calls it, all bound up and triple-scarved against the cutting wind. Meanwhile, the Tesco van of home delivery chugs past the empty fields of horse and livery and all the still fishing ponds of dead wedge wood, where the empty goalposts, now rusted white, stand grinning like rich Chinamen, whilst bone-skinned herons blue and grey, like sentinel still soldiers and the guardsmen of waiting death, are motionless either side of the portals of my memory, marking this my wedding day. Forty years on, the broken boughs of old gnarled trees, the dead stumps and the sheared off trunks of the wet and waiting woods, all bear the marks of lightning gone, burnt out now and cold without the fire. Halfway down the hill, a memorial bench to Fred, who's dead, is surrounded by flowers, all left for the ghosts to see and smell, and laid by the midnight and unseen people, all wrapped in red ribbon, as the shivering daffs bois their heads beside the cold memorial to poor dead Fred. Now a corpse, decayed and vile, yet still we are invited to please sit a while, and remember his laugh, consider his smile. Memorials are for the living, lest they forget. The dead have forgotten already. Visiting seagulls crack the surface tension of the icy smoky water, whilst the winter sardine-like slaughter of the still mirrored face ponds continues on and ever on. After all, we've all got to eat. And the leaf-empty trees, like lungs coughed raw, bear like cancer, their witches' brooms infesting their cold canopy floor and their empty rooms of February. Whilst quack-quack go the quickening dogs or the gold-grey fence towards the empty cricket pitch, now naked without the covers of the bowling greens, as winter lays all the hidden ground out to be so clearly seen by the bobble-hatted children, shuffling like mice on this socks tucked in the jeans, maudlin Monday morning, when winter leaves the lane in Wedgwood all fired in Potter's morning greys, as these late and bitter days chase all our summer dreams away. Zechariah 1 verse 7 to 11 says this, On the 24th day of the 11th month, which is the month Shabbat, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, the prophet. I saw by night, and behold, a man riding on a red horse, and it stood among the myrtle trees in the hollow, and behind him were horses red, sorrel, and white. And I said, My Lord, what are these? So the angel who talked with me said to me, I'll show you what they are. And the man who stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are the ones whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro throughout the earth. So they answered the angel of the Lord, who stood among the myrtle trees and said, We've walked to and fro throughout the earth. And behold, all the earth is resting quietly. A word of explanation then. Uh, when I was writing this piece, we were renting property on the Wedgwood Estate in Barliston, Staffordshire, England. Wedgwood's a very fine china porcelain luxury accessories company, founded on the 1st of May in 1759 by Josiah Wedgwood. In 1766, Wedgwood bought uh, Etreria, a large Staffordshire estate, as both a home and a factory site. However, this current estate I'm walking on, this 380-acre estate in Barliston, was bought by the Wedgwood Pottery Company in 1937 as a site to replace that operation in Etruria, or Etruria. Wedgwood Lane runs parallel to the tree-lined Wedgwood Drive as you turn left up Queen's Mary's Drive towards Barliston Hall. You know, from my study in Barliston to the hall and back was a brisk 20-minute walk. The Wedgwood factory is now owned by a Finnish company, but the tea that they serve in their shops is most brilliant nevertheless. 
February 24th, the end of February, is my wedding anniversary. I took a brisk walk that morning in the absolutely freezing February air. These are the things I saw. This is how it made me feel. I hate February. It's the foul beast of all the months. If February were an apostle, it would be called Judas Iscariot. February's always interested in money, you see. Always betrays you in the end, like a knife in the back. Some performance tips. This is a good performance piece. I like it. It is evocative of the end of winter and that dread despondency that grips us all in the last gasps of February. Lies to us that winter will never die and give way to the warmer springs. Bloody 8 February. (laughs) 